This is pre-calc section 7.2 part 2 on ellipses. Now we're going to look at what happens when the ellipse is not at the origin. We're now going to have this formula. We have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. That should look familiar because that's the same thing we had when we had the circle. So remember, I teach this different from the book. That's the only form we're going to have to worry about, where A always goes under the X, B always goes underneath the Y. So A refers to horizontal distance, B refers to vertical distance. So if A is greater than B, if this number right here is bigger than this number right here, then we know it is a horizontal ellipse. Also to find C, we do A squared minus B squared equals C squared. It is A squared first because A is bigger. The center is HK, just like it was for a circle. The major axis is horizontal. As soon as you know that this one is bigger, then you know it is a horizontal ellipse. And because it is a horizontal ellipse, you're going to do things to the horizontal component of the center to get both the foci and the vertices. So C is how you're going to find the foci. So if you take the C value and tack it onto the H value, that's how you end up with that formula for the foci. So H plus C and then h minus c, comma k. The vertical part of the center does not change. Vertices, same thing. You're going to add a, which is the horizontal component for moving left or right. You're going to add that a onto the h. So h plus or minus a, comma k. Notice the format here for the foci and the vertices. They both have h plus or minus something followed by k. The k is the vertical component of the center. It's not changing, changing because this is a horizontal ellipse. What's being done to H is either you're adding C to find the foci or A to find the vertices. Now the opposite here, the endpoints of the minor axis, that's an entirely different format. This, because it is a horizontal ellipse, that means our minor axis will be the vertical axis. And that's why we are adding and subtracting B, which is the vertical component of A, B, and C to K, and the H, which is the horizontal part of your center, stays the same. So let's look at an example with numbers and see if we can do this. Easy to name the center, 1, comma, negative 4. Remember with this, we're always changing the sign inside there. A is what's underneath X, so square root of 16 is 4. B is the square root of 9, which is 3. To find C, we have to do bigger, take away smaller, so that's 16 minus 9 is 7, but of course it's the square root of 7. And just a word about bigger take away smaller. It is a squared minus b squared equals c squared, but in this format this 16 right here represents a squared. So I'm not squaring 16. I took the square root of 16 to get the 4. Same deal with the 9. Now it is a horizontal ellipse. Why is it a horizontal ellipse? Because the a squared is bigger than the b squared. Because it is a horizontal ellipse, I would underline the horizontal component of the center just to remind myself that I'm going to add onto that to find both the foci and the vertices. To find the foci, that means I'm going to take the C value and add and subtract that to that part of the center. So the foci will be 1 plus or minus radical 7, comma negative 4. The vertices are found the same way, but because it is a horizontal ellipse, we're taking the A value and adding it and subtracting it from the center here. So this is 1 plus or minus 4 comma negative 4. But because these are whole numbers, I need to actually finish this out. 1 plus 4 is 5 comma negative 4. And 1 minus 4 is negative 3 comma negative 4. Now I could stop right there and go to the graph, and that might be a good idea. Our center here was 1 negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And my a value is 4, so count over 1, 2, 3, 4. Count over 1, 2, 3, 4 in this direction. And those right there will be my vertices. My vertices should be 5, negative 4 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 4. This one is negative 3, negative 4. So that just confirms what we got using the formula. Then to get the vertices for b, we're going to add 1, 2, 3 this way. So track 1, 2, 3 this way. Now those are not actually vertices, those are the endpoints of the minor axis. So this is the point 1, negative 1. And this is the point over 1, down, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice I did that straight from the graph. I could go with the formula, and the formula is this. To find the endpoints of the minor axis, 
we're going to tack the B onto the Y part of the center. So negative 4 plus 3 is how I get negative 1. Negative 4 minus 3 gives me the negative 7. So then to draw this, I have a problem with this little tool here, so you get the idea. The domain is from left to right, so the x-coordinate right over here is negative 3 with a bracket, and the x-coordinate over here is 5 with a bracket. And what are those without the graph? Those are the x-coordinates of my vertices. Now my range is from low to high, and that is, looking at the graph, that is negative 7 up to negative 1. But to do this without the graph, we are looking at the endpoints of the minor axis. That's going to give me the range, so that's negative 7 to negative 1. Let's look at this formula if b is greater than a. If b is greater than a, that means we are looking at a vertical ellipse. And we will find the foci and the vertices by tacking onto the vertical part of the center. The center is still hk. The major axis is vertical because b was greater than a. So to find the foci, we are going to add and subtract that c from the vertical part of the center. So you could underline the vertical part of the center to remind you that c gets tacked onto that. To find the vertices, b will get tacked onto that. Now why is it b? Remember a is underneath x, which means a is a horizontal distance. b gets tacked onto y, that is a vertical distance. If it is a vertical ellipse, that means the endpoints of the minor axis are along a horizontal line, and that's why the a value gets put onto the h. So with some numbers, our center is still 1, negative 4. A is the square root of 16, which is 4. B is the square root of 25, which is 5. And we're going to take bigger, take away smaller. So 25 minus 16, the square root of, is going to give me 3. This is a vertical ellipse. Why is it a vertical ellipse? Because the B squared is bigger than the A squared. Now, because it is vertical, I know I'm going to be adding and subtracting onto the Y part of the center to get both the foci and the vertices. The foci tell me to add c onto that. So the foci will be 1, comma, negative 4, plus or minus 3, which I need to clean that up because it's all whole numbers. 1, comma, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, and negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Vertices, because it is a vertical ellipse, it's the b value that has to be put onto this. So this will be 1 comma negative 4 plus or minus 5. Just cleaning that up is 1, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. And I'll go to the graph right now, a center of 1, negative 4. A is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 in the other direction, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to go off the graph here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, about right there. And you can see it is a vertical ellipse because it is elongated vertically. And just checking, I said the vertices were 1, negative 9, over 1, down 9 is that vertice. And over 1, up 1 is that one. These right here will be the endpoints of the minor axis, which according to the formula, because it is a vertical ellipse, the other component, which is A, is going to get put onto that. So it is 1 plus or minus 4, comma, negative 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, comma, negative 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, comma, negative 4. Now, if you don't want to go with the formula, go with your graph. We've graphed this pretty neatly. The endpoints of the minor axis have to be on the shorter axis and see what that coordinate is. That's over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 4. This one? is to the left 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 3, negative 4. Domain is left to right, so we're looking at these x's for our x values coming across here. This is over at negative 3, and it's going over to 5 with brackets. Our range will be our bottom, our low to high, and our least y value is negative 9, and it goes up to a height of 1. Now this is the ellipse in general form. We're going to have to complete the square like we did with circles to get it in the right form to be able to name all this stuff. And it's the same process that we had with the circles with one little change, and that is this. Notice 
we have coefficients in front of x squared and y squared that are not the same. We did have some circle problems where we had coefficients, but they were the same number. And because they were the same number, we were able to just divide out that coefficient. This we have to do just a little bit differently. It's not difficult, but it is just a little different. So we still want to rearrange this so that we're looking at our x stuff sitting together, our y stuff sitting together. Now in this problem, y and the x stuff happen to be next to each other, but sometimes you have the x squareds next to each other and then the plain old x and y. But we also want to get that 61 to the other side. When you move it to the other side, it becomes negative 61. Now, I just need to deal with this part right here. And what I want to do is factor a 4 out in front. So factor a 4 out gives me x squared minus 4x plus blank. I'm going to add something in there to complete the square. Also over here, I'm going to lay this out as negative 61 plus blank plus blank, because you know we're going to add something to both sides. But here's where this is a little different. Inside the parentheses, half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. But what you have really added to this side in totality is 4 times 4. That's where this is a little bit different. We added the 4 because we completed the square. Half of 4 is 2, squared is 4. But that 4 is sitting out front here. That means what we've really added is a 16. Over here, same process, factor out a 9. This is now 9 squared, or y squared, plus 6y, plus blank. Completing the square, half of 6 is 3, squared is 9. But what we really added to this side was 9 times 9, which is 81. If you make a mistake with those numbers, you're going to be left with something over here that doesn't divide out like it's supposed to. We've done the bulk of the work right there. All we have to do now is factor this. Factors is x minus 2 quantity squared, it is minus because that sign is minus, plus 9 times y plus 3 quantity squared. And arithmetic over here, if you add this up over here, is going to give you a 36. Now remember what our form is. Our form has got to have equal to 1. And the only way to get this equal to 1 over here is to divide everything by 36. Divide that by 36, this by 36, this by 36. And this is nice. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So we have x minus 2 squared over 9 plus, same thing here, 9 goes into 36 4 times, y plus 3 squared over 4 equals 1. And that is our standard form of the ellipse. Now we're going to go to the other page to answer all the questions, but before we go, you should recognize what this is. This is a horizontal ellipse because that is bigger. So. Next page, I've just got this written up neatly for us. So it is a horizontal ellipse. The center is 2 comma negative 3. A is the square root of 9, which is 3. B is the square root of 4, which is 2. When we do bigger, take away smaller. 9 minus 4 is 5. So the C value is the square root of 5. I'm going to go straight to the graph right now. Over 2, down 3 from my center. Go to the right, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Go up to, go down to, and there is your graph. And I only did this just to point out that for some of you, going straight to the graph might make it easier to find the vertices and the endpoint of the minor axis. The foci, you still have to realize it is a horizontal ellipse, so underline that part of the center. It is a horizontal, so the C value is going to be put right on top of that 2. So that's 2 plus or minus radical 5. Comma negative 3. And what does that really mean as far as the picture goes? That means we started at 2. There was our center right there. We would move radical 5 steps over this way, radical 5 steps over this way, and that's where the foci are. The vertices, we can count directly on the graph if you want. This is over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1, 2, 3. So 5, negative 3 are vertices. And over here, over negative 1, down negative 3. Now, does that fit with our formula? Sure. It is a horizontal ellipse. Therefore, the horizontal component right here is going to get tacked on to that. So that is 2 plus or minus 3 comma negative 3. 2 plus 3 is what gives me the 5. 2 minus 3 gives me the negative 1. The endpoints of the minor axis are these right here. You can name those from the graph over 2 down 1. And this is over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, you could get that using the formula. The formula tells me to keep, because this is a horizontal ellipse, the endpoints of the minor axis are going to be on a vertical line. 
So that means the h of the center stays the same, and we will take negative 3 plus or minus the vertical component, which is 2. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Once you have your picture drawn, domain is just left to right, which this is over at negative 1, and it ends up over at 5, and those should both be brackets. Range is low to high, so it is at a smallest y value of down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we've gone up to negative 1.